all my life, I've been considered as the worst. After I was drowsy stepping, hear the sermon, hold the reverend. Long distance relationships with triple sevens. Who to guessed it? Feeling washed up before it's prime mic sessions. And that's for rhyming and Hello, nomads. Hello, party people. Hello, strangers everywhere across the internet. And welcome to another episode of Nomadic Opinions. I may be late to the party on this because Comic-Con passed a long time ago, except for in the state of Maryland where they have Baltimore Comic-Con just a few days ago, but I'm still trying to get my thoughts on this before they join the main Marvel Cinematic Universe in the Infinity, Gaunt in the Infinity Stone slash Infinity Wars, wait, was it, in what was the other Infinity War movie that they said they were going to come out with? Whoever can find that out before I can, post in the comments below about what are the two new Infinity title movies besides Infinity Wars. And, uh, yeah, I want to get my thoughts on these three shows that are coming to Netflix for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Starting off with, first, my boy, my dude, Luke motherfucking Cage. Now, it's no secret, I like the dynam dynamic between Luke Cage and Jessica Jones because as a minority of sorts, mostly because I don't claim a race or nationality, Luke Cage and Jessica Jones are a superhero model of they can be normal people in superhero society that can get together and not care about race. You know the proto-interracial couple that a lot of people were afraid of for some weird reason. But aside from that, though, Luke Cage has had a really weird history since he was in creation. From in the comics, actually being a superhero after breaking out of prison, because you can't have a black superhero without him being in jail, or a teenager, possibly with friends that will put him in jail. Comics are kind of racist. Anyway, the way that they've been transpiring him from generation to generation to now being this really tough guy trying to save Harlem, I get behind it. I actually like that a lot better than he breaks out of jail for the ninth time to become the best superhero for hire. Because, yeah, that, that doesn't scream racist. And the way that they got the villains pointed out for him. I'm not really that familiar with his rogues gallery like a lot of different heroes. Because I haven't read comics in about almost almost a decade and a half. So my knowledge of, of a lot of stuff. No, it has been a decade and a half yet. It's been like nine years. I haven't read comics in nine years. So my... My knowledge of Rogue's Gallery for a lot of villain for a lot of heroes is way off. The show is gonna have to remind me about every villain. Like every video game that's based on a comic thing has to remind me of who's what. Then I'll be like, oh, from that story with the thing that happened where this person had that happened. Cause that's smart, right? But anyway, from First, not making it a super racist backstory for him being a superhero. Already a good start. Also, the fact that he's going to be in Harlem, basically running sh and maybe opening a bar, a familiar bar that was closed down. Stuff like that seems a little interesting if you ask me. But yeah, we're going to find out about him at the time of this recording in about 24 days because September is here. We're just waiting on September 30th to drop all the episodes of Luke a Cage. But where would Luke Cage be without his partner in crime, his dude among dudes, the man that he partners up with more than most other superheroes? And I mean to tell you about Danny Rand, a.k.a. Iron Fist. Now, I'm not that familiar with Iron Fist, but I do know 
he and Doctor Strange would be the hardest to get in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because magic with godlike beings and superheroes would be a little weird for people that want a grounded story these these days. You know, from a guy that's a super genius that made his own bi battle suits, a guy that had gamma radiation turning him into a giant hulk of a creature, a Norse mythology guy that's not even based off the actual actual Greek myth Norse mythology, but a weak-ass ripoff, a, a man that can shrink himself down to the size of an ant and control the ants and also grow gigant gigantic height. Just like Goliath, who is a fucking racist kill in Marvel Civil War comic. And let's not forget about all the other magical-based heroes that are supremely magical, besides Doc Doctor Strange and Iron Fist. Cause, yeah, you guys don't know how magic's gonna work in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, when there's so much weird going on. No, no, no. Magic is the one thing that is so hard to stomach in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, uh, while you swallow that hypocrisy juice, why am I excited for Iron Fist over people saying the Punisher is going to get his own show? If you haven't seen my Daredevil Season 2 review, let me, let me just say it up here. I've never liked the Punisher. His character was an interesting imbalance of things, such as being the anti-every superhero. He's violent, but also direct. He's cruel, but kind of acceptable. He's like that dastardly guy that you would hate to party with, but want to party with, just to see how weird shit would get. Iron Fist, nothing like that. He's basically the hippie sort of guy that accepts all of life, yet was trained to use mystical kung fu to just wreck everything. Which is a nice counterbalance for the man that can't feel anything because he has invulnerable skin. Sort of like he was meant to be his best friend. And to show that black people and white people can be best friends. You know, like how all races can be friends. And you don't have to build a damn wall and just say that all immigrants are bad when the country of the United States was built off of Something a big ass Oompa Loompa fucking forgot, but we're not gonna talk about him. Regardless though, I haven't heard a lot about the Iron Fist show because they've been so focused on getting Luke Cage done that I have no idea what to really expect involving Danny's journey. We could get a giant multitude of villains, sure, but I don't know what to fucking expect. I don't even know half the stuff that I should be excited about, but I'm excited nonetheless. And frankly, I think everyone else is too. But enough, but enough about that stuff. We have one more show I want to get to, but you're like, oh no, weren't there just only two figures in the thumbnail? There were. There were. But you guys are forgetting the biggest crossover event that's happening for the TV Cinematic Universe involving four superheroes in the city of New York, which is The Defenders. Yeah, the Defenders. Originally, their leader was supposed to be Doctor Strange, but he's getting his own movie. So he doesn't have to be in the shows. He doesn't have to be in the streets of New York fighting crime with all these four people. No, 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 no. He gets his own movie to then join the universe in general to then become part of the Avengers automatically at some point. So, he doesn't have to subject, subject himself to forming the Defenders in order to fight off something that could have not been the hand-related. No, 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 no. We have to make sure that the Defenders are brought together because the hand has everything in New York covered. The hand has to be everywhere because the hand is the only big organization in the Marvel Universe. That is the only fucking big organization in the Marvel Universe. Not a league of rogue psychics that want to take over the world. Not Hydra actually having Splinter Cell operatives that actually do cause havoc and mayhem. Not anything involving weird anti-movement groups 
that form villains together to kill other individuals. Not any of them just rogue villains that try to be good but then turn bad again. No, 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 just the hand. Just the hand is the only way to unite all these people from the similar universe that is going on exactly with the big cinematic universe is the only way to get these four individuals together. And from the way I'm talking about, you probably like, you sound angry and upset about how this whole thing is. I'm not upset. I'm just disappointed because I expected better. Like a lot of people would. But, you know, in a show like, in a show like this where you have to take the punches and roll with it, what can you really do? You have only such a limited amount of resources with Netflix and with Marvel itself because Disney owns them that you have to just roll with what you have. I get that and I understand it. Doesn't mean that I like all the choices that are made. But that's not for me to say at this point. But what I can say at this point about the Defenders is that I like the roster that they have of Daredevil, Jessica Jones, her future husband of Luke Cage and Iron Fist coming together to help defend New York City. All of the boroughs under strict watch by these four powerful people that have great amount of experience, great at their craft, and can actually help one another in ways that none of the other heroes would ever expect. Because to be honest, think about it like this. You have a man that is sure blind but has all of his senses accurately honed to not even a t like a letter that's not even existence anymore where he can sense anything coming in his way and still be a martial artist expert you have a woman that has superpowers of flight super strength and durability and can still be psychically immune to certain people like Kilgrave and other mind controlling individuals to help be a good detective eye to everything around the city. You have an imper impermeable man who has great durability, good strength, and has the know-how of the streets to know how to get the job done super fast if there is lagging. And you also have a kung fu master of the mystical arts that can keep up with anything to make sure that you bring down the hand ninjas that would probably be resurrected and keep them down. That combination is smart, but at the same time, will they go with that actual smart route or will they go the Disney route? That's my main issue. Sorry about that, camera issues. We're getting it fixed in about a week. Anyway, like I was saying, I'm excited for about all three of these shows over all the MCU news about shows because, let's face it guys, in a day and age where there are various superheroes that can do whatever the writers say, these are the three most grounded shows to what we would expect if we were to become superheroes. For being a blind person, to be an abused, battered woman, to be a minority, and to be someone that feels like they've lost everything. The more that you have shows like this culminating where it's a giant cult and cult calming grounds of intertwining factors and fates that's when you know you have a good product and how you can definitely find a solid ground to get a good structure a good story a great fan base and more of a great story to be pouring towards you and i find that more appealing than anything involving the mcu right now not a reboot of Iron Man, not the new Captain America that's going to come af come afterwards when Steve Rogers is no longer around, not the new Hulk whenever they replace the Hulk, not the female Thor when that happens. I'm more excited about these three shows than I've been excited about anything involving comics in a long time. And that is saying something, Marvel, since you're the reason I've hated comics until recently. Seriously, go fuck yourself with that one more day bullshit. Anyway, that is enough of me ranting about these three shaws until we do reviews of them. So, next time on Nomadic Opinions, I'm leaving it subscriber choice, so... I'm gonna leave it up to, I would say... Uh...
I'll leave it up to Magic Zenith to decide what is the next Nomadic Opinions episode. It has to be something entertainment related though, that's my only restriction because I don't do pol- uh, pol I don't do politics, I don't do news right now, and entertainment is easy to get a hold of and to talk about, especially with the new bylaws of YouTube. Which reminds me, go fuck yourself YouTube. My tags are in check, I keep to myself, I'm not doing anything illegal, but go fuck yourself with all these stupid guidelines. Anyway, I'll see you guys in my next video, so peace and take care, my lovely little nomads out there. I'll see you next time to all my party people out there. Remember to keep grooving to that unique beat of yours. And if you're a stranger here and you have enjoyed me just rambling and ranting and all this sort of stuff and just see videos where I'm super calm, super nice, and just trying to give back to the people. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the Nomadic family today. It's nothing but love, support, and cherishing one another instead of the drama, BS, and hurtful nature that so many other fandoms have succumbed to. It's a, it's a giant family I'm trying to form where everyone is accepted instead of being vilified. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video, whenever that is.